Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our third episode of Ice TV. So, uh, living in Canada, the realities are last week I was telling you about this massive heat wave we were having, and today I'm wearing a cardigan because it's about 14 degrees outside. For Americans down there, we're talking about Celsius at the mo moment, so no panicking. Um, but regardless of that, it is Ice Tea Month, and any opportunity that we have to celebrate tea in all of its form, we are going to take advantage of. And Ice Tea is certainly no exception to that. And I think that one of the things that some of us need to perhaps, and I will include myself in that category, um, think about is that Ice Tea isn't just about hot days. So even though, you know, I obviously talked about it, um, this heat wave, as I said last week, and yes, it's cold this week, it doesn't mean that I should be drinking any less iced tea. Because tea is about refreshment. And that can be a hot refreshment, it can be a cold refreshment. And the reality is that I will have a cold glass of water or a juice or whatever the case may be, regardless of what the temperature's out there. So let's get out of this mindset that iced tea is only for hot months, because that is so not the case. Um, we've had some great guests the last couple of weeks, and I know that the next two weeks, including today, are going to be brilliant as well. We've seen everything from mocktails to cocktails. We've seen traditional iced teas to granitas and even iced tea with K-cups. Um, really a little bit of everything for everybody. And I think that's what's so exciting about what we're doing today is that every single person, every single guest that I've had so far um, has their own take and uh, a different twist on tea and how to chill out. So with that, I'm going to start actually with a short video presentation that one of our members has submitted, and that's by Plan de Vida. Plan de Vida was founded by certified TAC tea sommelier Erica Bale, and it is an online specialty tea retailer. And in the video that you're about to watch, Erica is going to be making... Summer Sips Spritzer. So with that, let's see what Erica has for us. All right. Well, again, just a little twist on something that is really quite beautiful. And I think that's one of the great things about iced teas. Um, a lot of the teas that are used quite often have hibiscus in it. And that's where we're getting all these beautiful, bright red colors. So our second guest is Amanda Baker. And I'm going to pop you into my stream. Hi, Amanda. How are you? Hi, I'm good. I love what you said about iced tea isn't just for summer because this is something that I do year round. And I actually have some blends that I love for like a post workout, regardless of the season. So I love that you feel that way too. I love that. And post workout is so important, right? I mean, we're all hydrating, hopefully, all of the time. And to hydrate a lot of the time with cold beverages, not just hot beverages. And it's something that, you know, I've said a few times in the last couple of weeks, as Canadians, we don't naturally gravitate towards an iced tea. But if people start to think of it as hydration, then why not, right? Yeah. And it's, it's so much better than water. I mean, water is great. But, yeah. you know, you can get sick of water and water sometimes can feel like a chore, like when you're just trying to chug water to get your daily intake. And um, for me, anyway, tea is never a chore. So I find that hydration through like herbal blends is my favorite way to do it. Couldn't agree with you more. So um, before I let you get started, Amanda, I'm going to introduce you to everybody else. Um, Amanda Baker is here representing Tea's Tea. Um, pursuing an interest in the world of tea early on in her career, Amanda was one of the first team members at what became a nationally recognized tea chain as well as a manager at an exclusively, uh, exclusive tea restaurant. Um, building on her interest in socially conscious business, Amanda spent half a decade at a social impact marketing agency practicing the theory that profit drives purpose and vice versa. 
you couldn't have landed at a better company with that and as your background, Amanda. Um, Amanda now leads the team at Tease Tea as the Chief Operating Officer, a company that brings the world of tea and socially conscious businesses together. So with that, Amanda, I am going to pass this over to you because I believe you are making three recipes for us. One is the sparkling citrus oolong. Mm -hmm. Second, we've got the pineapple party punch. And third, we've got the raspberry mint focus potion. Mm -hmm. Dying to see it. So, floor is yours. So at teas, we talk about um, using teas for their health benefits a lot. And each tea has unique kind of superpowers, if you will, to help with different things. So what I have today is a little bit of a, a sampling for kind of whatever mood you're in for iced tea. We have a recipe here today that's going to uh, keep you in that mood. So I will start off with our sparkling oolong. So this is kind of a classic iced tea, a little bit elevated. So the base of this is our main squeeze tea, which is like this beautiful citrusy vanilla kind of blend. And it, it's with a very light oolong, so really nice, delicate flavors. Excellent for making in huge quantities. You'll see I have my big iced tea pitchers here. So excellent for making in big quantities. Um, kind of great all around crowd pleaser. And what I've done for this one to make it super simple is it's just mostly tea. So I fill it up. I mean, you can do your ratios however you prefer, but I fill it up to about like the three, you know, three quarter way mark. And then I just top it off with sparkling water. And it's a really nice way to get hydrated, feel a little fancy, and also just have like a delicious tea in your day. So um, something that I've also done with all of my blends you'll see is I've added garnishes, yep. which is a little bit extra, I know, but um, sometimes you just need, you need a little something extra. You want it to feel special, especially for those folks who, who might not be drinking alcohol and you kind of want a cocktail and everybody's having a cocktail. This is a great way to do it. Or, you know, pregnant women, new moms, like this is a way to do a proper, simple, non-alcoholic kind of mocktail situation that still has a ton of health benefits. Um, so that's our first tea right here. So super simple. I'm going to call this like uh, beginner level one. <laughs> so I'm going to I'm going to pause it right there because I love that, and I've talked a lot about making your iced teas and um, th the whole garnish thing and the sparkling water and just elevating it. And as you say, yes, you called it a little extra, but you know. That's what life's about, being extra. Um, and it's just, you know, I, I quite often will um, like to use glassware other than what I might normally do a glass of water from, right? So um, a wine glass, uh, a champagne flute, um, like bring out your good stuff and use it. It's not only for alcohol and, you know, fancy campaigns, right? Of course, yeah. And as you know, and probably everybody watching knows, the world of tea has so much depth and complexity, just as much as wine. That's actually what brought our founder into the tea world was initially she was interested in wine and realized that tea was just as beautiful and had just as, as many um, complexities as wine. So yeah, tea is special. Treat your tea a little special, you know? Yeah. Even if it's a simple, simple co cocktail, tea cocktail like this, that's only a couple ingredients. Love it. Okay. So that was our beginner. That was sparkling citrus oolong. What are you doing next? Mm -hmm. So next I'm going to show you the, um, the focus potion. So I love this guy. So this is again, really simple. No alcohol in this one. This is our, what will be changing its name actually to Hocus Focus. I realized that that's the name I gave in the recipe. Right now you can find it under the name Focusify. Same exact blend. So it's a really great mate blend with spearmint and ginkgo. And it's incredible for getting you focused and on task. I ice this tea and drink it like around the clock during the week when I have big things to focus on or, you know, I just need to like plow through that inbox. I think we've all felt this way. Um, so what I've done with this guy, really simple. So just brewed it overnight again in my nice big brewer here, just cold brewed it overnight and then just added a little bit of flourish. So I added a little bit of lemon juice to this guy. I also added some raspberries and some mint. And this is like an all day tea. It does have quite high caffeine spikes because of the mate base in it. Um, but if you are good with caffeine, you will be great with this tea. It's so delicious and just helps you really stay on task. Fabulous. Um, now, 
I don't, you didn't, you haven't mentioned whether you sweeten to your teas. Do you like to sweeten your teas? It really depends on the tea. So these last two I showed you unsweetened, they totally can be sweetened. I actually find the main squeeze, the citrusy tea, if it's a little bit sweetened, it has like a slight bubble gummy finish yeah. um, in a really good way. Um, if you don't like bubble gum, please don't let that deter you from this tea. Yeah. <laughs> it, it doesn't taste like candy or anything artificial. We do not use any sugar or anything artificial in our tea blends, uh, but it's got like that, that little sweet, I don't know, like kind of like a dessert type vibe when you yeah. add a little bit of agave or sugar to it. Um, with my mates, I actually never sweeten them because I really like the grassiness of a good mate. Um, mm -hmm. But if grassiness isn't your thing, like if you're the type of person that like hates matcha, um, add a little bit of sugar to your mate and I think that you will like it a lot more. But I prefer my mate is sugar free. Great. Okay. And um, so that this is our sort of medium based uh, mm -hmm. difficulty level, although even that's easy. What you yeah. just add, right? Super easy. The only reason why I put this one at slight more difficulty is because you have to cut a lemon and squeeze it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, I can like, manage that. <laughs> All righty. And um, next you are doing the pineapple party punch. Yeah, so this one is our level three. We're gonna crank it up real quick with this guy. So this one is got some alcohol in it and a little bit of party vibe. So this is a black tea base. So this is using our pineapple punch blend. It's a black tea base. It's got coconut in it. It's got pineapple in it. It's really delicious. And it's got a little bit of natural sweetness from the dried pineapple inside of it. So what I've done with this guy is I've added rum. I've added a little bit of white rum. Um, dark rum you could use too, but it might compete a little bit with the black tea flavor. And I really love the black tea flavor in this. So I recommend white rum. I have added a little bit of agave to this. That is a preference. You can mm -hmm. use depending on the day. And then I also added some coconut cream to it to make it really creamy. So I think you can see on the bottom how, how yep. and delicious this coconut cream is. So before I drink this, I'm going to like give it a good stir. Um, but yeah, it's a great barbecue cocktail. And again, I mean, I feel like a broken record, but you make it in a big picture and you yeah. don't have to worry about it. Uh, people go crazy for this one and it's so good with anything spicy, anything barbecued. Nice. It's just a really nice alternative to like the same boring old cocktails that everybody's used to. I love that. So um, you could you could you could even take this with some ice and blend it because I see that and all I see is pina colada. Mm -hmm. Totally. Right. Sometimes I will blend my teas like when I'm getting a little wild or need like a little weekend fun. Um, but when I blend my teas, I always add um, like a creamy element to it. So frozen banana, avocado works too, like a frozen avocado, mm -hmm. something so that the tea doesn't separate because I find when you just blend ice and tea, it can get like a, just a little too icy for, for my preference anyway. I like something that's like a little bit creamier and luxurious. So I will always add that element if I'm blending something like this. That's a great tip. You could actually leave the ice completely out. And as you said, do a frozen banana or frozen berries and you get the exact same result. That's a really, really good tip. I love that. Love, love, love. And pineapple is one of those things that, um, you know, it's, I think it's a really underutilized fruit. Um, because it's very sweet and a lot of people, we all know it for it is, is sweet, but what you just said about it marrying really, really well with barbecue is that it grills well and it actually you know, has these savory elements to it that work really nicely. So I can see that being a perfect marriage. Yeah. And so good if you even wanted to throw in maybe a little bit of jalapeno in this drink too. Oh, yeah. That sounds a little wild, but now that I'm thinking of it, I'm like, Ooh, I might try that later. I love that. All right. Well, um, I'm definitely going to be adding that one to my list of things to try. Thank you so much, Amanda. Lots and lots of fun and uh, great, great recipes. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. I know I keep saying this, but every single time somebody comes up with something new and um, really fun. And, you know, for somebody who experiments a lot with her tea um, and, and tries to come up with new recipes and stuff, I find it always exciting when I'm learning something new every time as well. Um, with that, I am very pleased to introduce our next guest, Michael. Hi, Michael. Hi, Shabnam. How are you? I'm so good. How are you? Beach, please. Yes, please. Tis the season. Welcome to summer. Welcome I, to Ice Tea Month. I love it. Perfect t-shirt. Um, my beach is literally down the street, so 
Fantastic. Good choice. Lucky you. Lucky um, you. <laughs> all right. So before we get started, let me introduce you to everybody else. Uh, Michael Prini is the founder and president of Blink Tea and is a certified TAC tea sommelier. Um, Michael's inspiration lies in the desire to bring artisanal, top quality teas and herbals to tea lovers and to entice new drinkers to look beyond the cup to unique and fun ways to incorporate exotic and delicious teas into their active lifestyle. So Michael, um, question for you. Do you like your teas hot or cold? What do you gravitate to? Uh, I like my teas cold in the summer and, and hot in the winter. Yeah. The thing I like about um, cold tea in the summer is that it just, it, it opens up so many different opportunities, so many different ways that you can use tea. So when you would traditionally have you know, like I say, hot tea in the in the winter time. It's pretty standard the way I, at least the way I have tea. You really want to sort of enjoy the genuine quality of the tea. The, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, but in the summer, it just opens up a whole raft of opportunities. That's such a good point. You're and now that you say it, you're absolutely right. When I drink my tea hot, it's a straight tea. Personally, I, I you know, I, I I don't tend to do you know fruits and flavors and stuff in my hot teas but it's the cold teas that I have fun with. So that's a really good point. Yeah, yeah you can sort of expand. I'm known for making a good point now and again. <laughs> Always. Yeah. So with that, Michael, you are going to share with us cream of Earl Grey tonic mocktail. Yes, so right. what, I, what I decided to do was kind of flip the script a little bit on Ice Tea Month and rather than use a tea to make iced tea, I'm using tea in a simple syrup so that you can use it in any any number of different types of drinks. As I was just saying, uh, you have so many opportunities to have tea cold in the summer. So this is one good one and it's incredibly versatile. And um, basically what I do is I create a tea simple syrup and I have a, a very simple sort of go a simple uh, go to recipe for simple syrup. And that is like in a, just in a saucepan on the stove, I would put, I usually put like either five, uh, five teaspoons of tea. In this case, I'm using cream of roll gray tea. Right. And, uh, and then I sort of bring the water up to the temperature that is prescribed for the tea. Right. And I, you know, pour it into the saucepan on the little waiting tea bags and I steep it for a good five to six minutes. You want it to be nice and the tea to be nice and strong to carry things like ice uh, and other kind of mixers. So I, I let it steep for a good five to six minutes, remove the tea bags, and then uh, add a cup of sugar. This is for this recipe, by the way, is for one cup. Okay. So then I'll add a cup of sugar to the tea. Sounds like a lot of sugar, I know, uh, but uh, add a cup of sugar and then heat it up sort of medium high heat. You don't really want it to boil, but you want the uh, sugar to be able to dissolve in the tea. Once the sugar is dissolved in the tea, you let it cool down a little bit and then you can pop it into uh, the container of your choice. I use these, uh, these, little, these little squeezy bottles, little condiment bottles are perfect. They're fantastic, yeah. yeah. And then you're pretty much ready to go. And this is going to last in your fridge for, a, it'll last, one of these will last for a good month, depending on how much you go through. I was just gonna say, it depends on what you're making, but yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And the nice thing about this too, is that like, I've been doing a lot of experimenting with simple syrups. It's been kind of simple syrup month for me. And I've been trying a bunch of different teas as well. And we it just, you know, as a little offside here, before we get into the, the fun of making the recipe, um, I tried doing a, a chamomile lemongrass as a simple Ooh, syrup. Yeah. Also rocks, a chamomile lemongrass also rocks as a cold brew in the summer. It takes yes. on chamomile for what some reason takes on a completely different personality when you have it cold. It's so yeah. refreshing. Don't you think? I, I totally agree with you. I have to, I mean, I always say that I've never met a tea I don't like, yeah. um, but if I, I if I had to actually choose one, I'm a bit of a liar because chamomile is not my favorite. Not as a hot tea, it's kind of like, I just always feel like I'm, I'm sick or something when I'm drinking chamomile, yeah. Yeah. but cold, you're right. Totally different personality. Totally it's different cool. personality. And then on the opposite end of the scale, uh, I've made a simple syrup using Lapsang Sushong and oh, nice. that, is glorious. 
this oh. is absolutely incredible because you've got the mix of the smoke and the sweet. Um, it's kind of like maple syrup on Bacon. steroids. Yeah. You know, it's it's yeah. really amazing. It's it's absolutely amazing. And this you can use in any kind of refreshing uh, drink for the summer as well. I've actually, um, I haven't done it with the simple syrup, but I've actually uh, infused a Lapsang Souchong in um, ice wine. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's quite amazing. It's, it's, it's very, it gives it a whole different personality. You don't want to use a whole bottle. You want to be very careful. Well, expensive bottles. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, there you go. So, yeah. but, but hang on before you proceed, because now you've thrown something out there for that you have to explain to people. How did you, it, when you say you infuse Lapsang Kushong into alcohol, just tell people quickly how you did that. Or what it's the procedure is? Very, very, very uh, incredibly easy. Um, I would with, with ice with ice wine. It's a little bit different than than uh, other kind of liquors and stuff like bourbon and whiskey and so on and so forth. Um, you know, for a, a bourbon and a whiskey or something, you can use a good cup of that into which you would infuse four or five. Uh, like you know, you, I would use tea filters, four or five um, teaspoons of tea, mm -hmm. and let it uh, and let it just infuse for. You know, people say you can, you know, you have to let it go for a good 24 hours or something, but necessary. I don't think that's absolutely necessary. You can let it maybe, you know, four hours, six hours, and then you've yeah. got a really nice, uh, a really nice infusion uh, with the, um, because the alcohol for some reason just really takes to the tea leaves. Yeah. Um, with ice wine, it's a little bit different because as I was saying, uh, you really want to sort of dose off the the expensive yeah. ice wine so i would actually uh in a jar or something or another another glass other than you're having the drink in i would maybe depending on how many people you're serving whether it's like a cup or a cup and a half of the ice wine i would do i would do maybe two or three teaspoons per cup of ice wine because you don't want to take away too much Mm -hmm. from the ice wine and the ice wine itself is also kind of cold yeah. and the other thing about uh ice wine is that um you're drinking it without ice yeah. so when you're making a simple syrup or when you're making a cold brew or what have you you're always sort of suggest to people to add an extra teaspoon or you know add some extra tea so you're um you know you're taking you're taking into, into account the ice and the other liquids that are going to dilute it but with ice wine, you don't want to do that. You want to kind of keep it delicate. You know, it's a right. different, like, delicate interplay yeah. of, the, of the sweetness of the ice wine. Well, it's balanced, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Great. Okay, so show us what you're going to do with your Earl Grey Simple Syrup. <laughs> okay, so my Earl Grey Simple Syrup. So I've got three of them here, as I was saying, at the Chamomile and Lapsang Sushang. And the one that I labeled, a little bit of a cheat <laughs> sheet here for me, is the Cream of Earl Grey. And uh, as we we're saying, I, you know, I just made the little recipe up. Very, very easy. Just fill a highball glass with, uh, with ice. And then I would squeeze in a good ounce, three quarters of an ounce maybe, to an ounce of, uh, of the simple syrup. And I would sque uh, also squeeze in, sorry, I forgot, I forgot one thing. It's, uh, I've got the lemon here as a garnish, but I forgot yeah. to make some lemon as uh as an add-on again yeah. so i'm just going to squeeze a little bit of lemon in here but it would be probably about three quarters of an ounce of fresh lemon right uh, juice into the drink as well and then it's that it's as simple as oops, as finding your favorite tonic water mm -hmm. and uh, topping it with tonic water and if you're patient enough you pour it in slowly enough what's going to happen is that because the simple syrup is heavy, it's heavier than the tonic water, here we go, you're automatically going to um, layer the drink. Love it. Layers, I don't know if you layers. can see that, it kind of layers at the bottom. Gorgeous. Yep, gorgeous. There we Beautiful. go. Beautiful. Thank you. And then just garnish with a uh, garnish with a lemon wedge. Perfect. And there you go. You're done. And the really lovely thing about this is I have to take a sip of this because I, I absolutely adore this drink. This is just like a real a finder and a keeper. There's such a delicious. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, I would actually, I would say, I would say it just to learn it for presentation and then stir it up a little bit <laughs> uh, because you don't want to have all your- You're going to get a mouthful of yeah. syrup if you don't stir it up for I sure. That. I forgot about that and I forgot about the lemon juice. Here we are. Okay. Yes. Much better. So what the, the end result is that you've got something that is, in, it's incredibly refreshing yeah. it's like your tummy is having a spa day <laughs> yeah yeah that's the only sort of way that i can explain it yeah um, it's the the bergamot and the vanilla obviously in the uh cream of old gray tea when it comes into play with the quinine from the tonic water um the little tang of the quinine it just it's just it's like a match it's an it's just a perfect match. it just works it just works. It's one of those things that just works. Yeah. And if you make it, if you make the, if you're going to make this, make a lot of it. Uh, because at first glance, when I've served this to a couple of, you know, socially distanced guests, yes, of uh, course. Um, you know, they, when I say, when I mentioned mixing tea and tonic water, you know, they kind of wince. Uh, so you've got to kind of convince them to kind of have to coax them to try it. And once they try it, they say, Oh my goodness, where, where has this drink, been all of my life. Well, Michael, I don't tell people. I just make it and then tell them afterwards. <laughs> well, that's why you're the head of the Terror <laughs> Association. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, it's a, it's you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, this is a mocktail. Nice. Uh, but if you want to rock your mocktail, yes. uh, perfect accompaniment, perfect alcohol accompaniment to this would obviously uh, be gin. Then. Yeah. It just really lifts this up, uh, and also, you know, obviously, vodka fits into almost any any little yeah. sort of tea concoction, a little fresh tea concoction that you make, uh, or tequila. Tequila can also work uh, in in this uh, in this drink, but it's, it's absolutely uh, incredibly refreshing, and it's 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 a drink in a mocktail form. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna use uh, all summer long. I bet you will. Well, thank you so much for sharing those ideas and recipes with us, Michael. Good seeing you. Good seeing you too. Take good All care. Right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Well, some really fun ideas. Um, new concepts again. Uh, <clears throat> simple syrups for sure we've talked about. But the concept of infusing your tea directly into alcohol is a really, really interesting one. We've got information on our website um, for that as well, tea.ca. If you go to drinks and some of our recipes, um, we've done recipes on tinctures and infusing alcohol and, and even making all kinds of different cocktails in general. If you like the recipes that you see either today or in episodes past, um, just go to our YouTube link and you will see the full recipes for everything in the um, comment section. So below the actual clip itself. So if you like anything today or anything in the past, please do. And remember that all of these episodes are rewatchable because they're available on our YouTube channel as well as our Facebook page. So with that, I am very pleased to introduce our next guest, Shannon. Hi, Shannon. Hello there, Shabnam. How are you? I'm so good. How are you? Great. It's a rainy day over here today, but I can't think of a better day to make iced tea and just try to feel like it's summer, even if it's not feeling like it's summer outside. <laughs> Anything to make yourself feel better, right? Yeah. <laughs> and tea can do that. Oh, so definitely. Let me introduce you to everybody else. Shannon Scales, Lady Baker's Tea, um, manages marketing and social media for Lady Baker's Tea, as well as spearheading product development projects. She was the first employee to join the team. Were you really? I was, yeah. Yep. <laughs> many, many moons ago, yes. <laughs> Lucky lady, because I love Catherine. So me too. Please give Catherine <laughs> a hug for me. Um, anyway, she was the first employee to join the team many years ago and has worn all kinds of hats along the way as a mom and professional singer. You may remember. You may regret having added that to your bio, my dear. Shannon enjoys the flexibility of her role, which allows her to assist in the growth of the company while taking care of her son and following her other passions. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, so Shannon, you are making for us a watermelon twist iced tea. That's right, yes. Oh, yeah. This is a 
this is a Catherine specialty recipe. Catherine is the founder of the company, uh, Tea Sommelier, and big fan of the Tea Association. Um, and so, yeah, this recipe is based off of our watermelon twist iced tea, which is a blend, a China green tea that has apple pieces, hibiscus, moringa, spearmint and peppermint, which makes it have this lovely cooling effect, um, as well as dried island strawberries. So Ooh, nice. It's really refreshing on its own, but we just thought we would amp it up a little bit. All right. <laughs> Show me what you're going to do with it. Sure. So it has watermelon puree in it. And so uh, the recipe calls for um, blending your watermelon and then straining it. But I kind of skipped that step and I put it in a juicer if you have a juicer. Okay. So Great. That's okay. what I did today. So um, <clears throat> I'll just get started. Got my pitcher here. Awesome. So my pitcher is full of three cups of ice, okay. roughly. <laughs> um, and then I'm gonna take my beautiful watermelon puree, which is so good on its own, uh, and pour that in there. Now, that alone is pure gorgeousness, right? Right, like that. We could stop here, but why would we when we're a tea company? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and give that a little stir. So I have taken three tablespoons of Lady Baker's watermelon twist and steeped it in two cups of less than boiling water. My kettle is set for 185 um, okay. and uh, makes a perfect, perfect white uh, green tea. Mm -hmm. um, and then I let that steep for 10 minutes. Okay. Um, once it's finished steeping, pop it in the fridge and just let it fully cool. Okay. Um, and so that's what I have here in my little Pyrex. Gonna nice. pop that in there. It's such a beautiful color. It, 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 even that is. So for everybody watching, um, Shannon used um, water below the boil because you said that it's a green tea base. That's right. Mm -hmm. And you infused longer than what you would normally infuse a green tea for. So 10 minutes is a long time for a green tea, but that's okay because you are diluting it. Very much so diluting it. So that's what I'm doing here. Got it in with the ice, which will eventually melt. Yeah. Um, and then the watermelon, which has also been chilling in my fridge. So everything's nice and cold. So that's really it. You give it a nice stir. Um, and then you're going to put it in your glass. Everyone knows that. <laughs> so that goes in there. Nice tall glass with ice. And then I've got a beautiful mint bush. Oh, okay. Right? I'm just going to pop that in there as well. And that's it. It's it's really, really refreshing. It's that peppermint and the spearmint in the watermelon twist that really makes it so refreshing on the palate. Mm. And watermelon in summer. I mean, yeah. really, what else is there? Watermelon and mint are really, they're a match made in heaven. So perfect mm -hmm. combination, both in the tea and then obviously in that. Is it I, canon? <laughs> oh, it's so good. And my son, uh, who's six, I had the watermelon out this morning getting ready and he was like, oh, can I have that? I was like, actually, I'm making watermelon iced tea and you can have some later. And he said, I'm going to have a million sips of it. So he's very excited. <laughs> I love, love, love hearing that. So your son is into iced teas or in teas in general? Iced teas, yes. We go to the farmer's market every Saturday. And uh, Catherine also does up a beautiful lemonade, fresh squeezed lemonade. And you always have the option of, of topping it with either that or rhubarb syrup or... I, I have the tingles when you say lemonade. This is what happens to my mouth when 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 lemon is it gets all... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, that, so I love hearing, um, you know, younger kids getting mm -hmm. exposed to this and just, you know, we were talking earlier about thinking about tea as a refreshment. Iced tea is a refreshment. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, something that is we only do in the summer months, which as Canadians, mm -hmm. they said, we're just so counterintuitive to us. But mm -hmm. I was talking with my sister this morning um, and she has been following Ice TV as well the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And we've converted her. She is now making iced teas at home. So every time I hear, you know, anybody else outside of what we consider our normal demographics drinking tea, I'm like, yes, it's a win for all of us. Yeah. And, and, you know, I've started them young, my son, and 
what we do for him is we put, it's like a cambric tea where, Uh you know, you put in just a little bit of tea and then the rest is the lemonade and then you slowly wean them off of it. (laughs) Anyway, the herbals mainly in white teas. No, for sure. No, that's fantastic. So I'm a big lover of um, doing half iced tea and then topping it up with a juice. So a lemonade or cranberry juice or an apple cider or something like that. But I really Mm. love that you've taken actual fresh fruit you put it through a juicer, but as you said, for those of us who don't have juicers at home, you can blend it and then strain it, right? Or mm-hmm. not strain it if you like the the, the texture. The pulpiness, yeah, yeah. We we do on our recipe. We do um, say to strain it, but yeah, whatever floats your boat, really. Yeah, I love it. Um, we actually put a recipe in sip this month, um, and I can't remember if I made a cocktail out of it, but I made the same thing: the watermelon, um, mm-hmm. cut it into cubes, and freeze that. Right. And then use that in a blender with your tea and you've got a slushy. Oh my gosh. That sounds amazing. I wish I didn't use all my watermelon up. <laughs> <I'll> buy more. <laughs> well, lovely. it's been lovely having you, Shannon. Thank you so much for joining us. And Thank you. it's been a pleasure. Hello to your entire team over there in yes. Prince Edward Island. Thank you so much for having me. It's been such a pleasure. Thanks, Shannon. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. So um, pureed fruit in your tea. And watermelon, obviously, is just one example. There are so many, um, you know, especially if you've got a juicer. I mean, she just sort of opened up this whole world for me. If you have a juicer, juice some apples, juice some cucumber. I made um, many, many moons ago a jasmine tea with cucumber juice. And that was truly a match made in heaven as well. Just a, a beautiful combination. So, I, I, you know, it, it, the, the possibilities are tru- truly, truly endless. And with a simple syrup, remember as well that you can infuse the tea into a simple syrup. And we've said this now many times, simple syrup is really simple. It's half water, half sugar, equal parts, whatever volumes you're making. You can make a liter, a gallon, or half a cup, whatever it is that you want. Um, But the other layer of flavor that you could add into it is actually to work with some herbs. So don't be afraid to take a a nice black tea with rosemary and make a simple syrup out of that. Jasmine, which I was just talking about, a jasmine simple syrup with thyme is pure gorgeousness. So with that, um, our next guest is actually uh, also sent us a video. Unfortunately, with time differences, it didn't work out, but that's all right. Because um, Betty and Taylor's is an institution in the world of tea dating back to 1919. Their well-known and loved brands include Taylor's of Harrogate and Yorkshire Tea. The demo that I'm about to show you is done by Kate Halloran who works in research and development at Betty and Taylor's and has been a professional tea buyer for many, many years. And um, Kate is going to be showing us a classic iced tea version first. And from that, she's gonna turn it into an iced tea latte. Hi everybody, welcome to Yorkshire Tea. My name's Kate Halloran and I'm going to show you how to make a Yorkshire tea iced tea today. Okay, so what you need, some good quality tea bags, preferably Yorkshire tea, uh, some sugar if you're going to use it, or some slices of lemon or some honey if you prefer, uh, half filled jug of ice and uh, if you're going to do the second part with me, with me which is going to make a Yorkshire tea iced latte, and either use uh, dairy milk or oat milk or soy milk or any plant milk of your choice really, okay? So if you get everything together, then we can start. Most important thing to remember when you're making tea, use freshly boiled water from a freshly drawn tap. So if you've got some water in your kettle, empty it out and then use fresh water, boil your kettle. And if you're making iced tea, the rule of thumb is you use twice as many tea bags or as much loose leaf tea as you would ordinarily use for a normal pot or a normal mug of tea. So if, for example, if I normally use four tea bags per litre, I would use eight tea bags per litre to make iced tea, okay? So you brew it stronger, but not for longer. You don't brew it for any longer time, okay? So I've boiled the kettle in advance. You pour the freshly boiled water 
onto your tea bags and we leave these to brew for four to five minutes. The temptation is always to let it brew for longer when you're making iced tea, but it just gives you a potentially bitter taste. So just brew the normal amount of time, but a stronger amount, a larger amount of tea. Give it a little stir. And we would leave that to brew for four to five minutes. It's always best to use quality tea, uh, Yorkshire tea. We buy only the best teas from um, Assam, East Africa, uh, high grown estates. And we have really good partnerships with our tea buyers and tea growers. Um, before the pandemic, we used to travel to Origin regularly uh, and they used to come and visit us here as well. And one of the highlights of my training trip was to spend a year on the tea estates, learning how tea grows, how it's manufactured in the tea factories, uh, how it's sold, how it's transported, and it gives you just a real flavour of how to buy quality tea and what and what to do as well. So I'm not going to leave, I'm not going to use that one because that hasn't been brewed for long enough and that'll make me a bit twitchy if I start brewing that one, using that one now. This is one I made earlier. The important thing to remember is if you're going to use sugar or honey to add it when the tea is hot. So as soon as it's finished brewing, add your sugar or your honey or other sweetener to taste, okay? I quite I like quite a lot of sugar in my uh, iced tea. So I'm gonna put four sugar lumps in there. Give it a little stir to make sure they dissolve. And once they've dissolved, people think that you have to chill iced tea before it's ready to drink. If you use this method where you've got half uh, a pitcher or half a jug of ice ready, it will automatically cool the tea down, okay? So it'll be ready to serve. So. Now, if you're making a traditional iced tea, you use a little bit more ice and fill it all the way up to the top. Because I'm making a, an iced tea latte today, I'm gonna leave a bit of space, okay? I'm using oat milk today because that's what I'm drinking at the moment, but works equally well with dairy milk or with soya milk. And that's your finished tea. Rainforest Line certified Yorkshire tea from a carbon neutral business. Yorkshire tea is available to buy in most Canadian supermarkets and fine independent retailers. But if you want more information, go onto our website, which is yorkshiretea.ca. Thanks for watching. That's brilliant. Thank you so much, Kate, for that demo. Um, so you can see how simple it is to take a classic iced tea, any tea that you would have started with, a classic iced tea recipe, and turn it into an iced tea latte by pouring it over milk. Now, Kate's done it with oat milk, but as she said, you can certainly substitute that with whatever type of milk you like. I like to foam mine a little bit, so I have a, a, a little handy um, milk foamer that I'll use, but if you don't have that, you can actually put it into a jar and just shake it up. Another really, really good variation on that would be to pour that tea into a blender with a couple of scoops of vanilla ice cream, and you've got a beautiful treat for the summer. So thank you again to every single one of my guests for sharing some beautifully interesting recipes with us. Um, next week, we've got Clark's Tea, Ito N, Miss Tea, and Proper Cuppa. I hope you've learned something new and have something interesting and exciting to try today. I got a message from Australia um, earlier this morning telling me that they were trying some of the recipes that they saw last week. So we are reaching far and wide. As I said earlier, we've converted my sister. She's in Germany. So we've got viewers who are stretching um, a little bit beyond our Canadian borders. Thank you for all of you who watch live. And thank you for those that take the time to watch afterwards as well. Um, please remember, you can go to our YouTube channel as well as our Facebook channel to re-watch any previous episodes as well as get all of the recipes that you've seen that have been so generously shared by our members who are featured in ICE TV. Until then, I hope you chill out with some wonderful teas, find your favorites, and don't be afraid to experiment. See you next week. Thank you.